Dear Mr. Tanawat Tiatsen, Chair of the Committee on World Food Security. Dear Mr. Chris Hegadon, Secretary of the Committee on World Food Security. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to participate in this special event organized by the Secretariat of the Committee on World Food Security. Unfortunately, I'm unable to be with you as the first part of the 15th meeting of the Conference of the Parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity is taking place right now as you meet. We all know in no uncertain terms that biodiversity is the foundation of food security around the world. Our food depends on the availability of fresh water and healthy soils, which supply essential nutrients to plants that make 80% of the food we eat and produce 98% of the oxygen we breathe. Our lands are home to beneficial organisms that help to control pests and diseases, improve soil fertility, pollinate flowers, and increase crop production. None of these pieces can exist without the others. These interdependencies are even more striking if we look at food production. Unfortunately, food production is the single largest driver of environmental degradation and biodiversity loss. Although food production has increased exponentially in the past decades, it has happened at the expense not only of the planet, but of the people's health. It is for this reason that we are meeting today. The work of the Convention on Biological Diversity is critical to address food security issues and rally a wide range of stakeholders around these complex topics, much like the Committee on World Food Security and our sister conventions on climate and desertification. The science has made it clear our food systems are crossing planetary boundaries with the devastating implications for climate, biodiversity, and land. Therefore, our policy responses need to be integrated and coherent to deal with these triple, triple crises. The voluntary guidelines on food security and nutrition being discussed during this session of the Committee on Food Security or the recommendations on agroecological and other innovative approaches for sustainable agriculture and food systems that enhance food security and nutrition discussed during the 48th session of the Committee on world food security are few examples of how integrated approaches exist. These integrated approaches are already guiding countries in improving the sustainability of agriculture and food systems while ensuring food security and nutrition. As the Secretary General stated during the UN Food System Summit, we need to see and value food not simply as a commodity to be traded, but as a right that every person shares. The convention will adopt an ambitious and robust post-2020 global biodiversity framework. A framework will provide production systems based on the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity as they have the potential to offer invaluable benefits to nutrition and healthy diets, particularly for the vulnerable and marginalized groups. Please let me conclude by recognizing that we need all state and non-state actors to come together and resolve food biodiversity and climate crisis in tandem with each other. From fisher folks and family farmers to large-scale producers, governments, youth, women, indigenous peoples and local communities, with us all need hands-on duck. I invite you to strengthen the synergies that has brought us together and to actively participate in the second part of the Conference of the Parties 15th next year. That will see the adoption of the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework. The framework which you would have contributed 
to its development and hope the same will continue for its implementation. Because without healthy nature and biodiversity, we cannot have quality nutrition. And without quality nutrition, we cannot have good health. This is a reminder that sustainable choice of diets are at the core of human health and a healthy planet and of the, and of the inherent links to our work. Thank you.